Okay. So this is what we have done right now with respect to the installation. Yeah. So here he is speaking about a user called as Ansible user. I have created a user called as Ansible itself. That's the only difference. Right. Okay. So these are the terminologies which we should be familiar with. Inventories, modules, variables, facts, playbooks, and plays. Okay, configuration files, templates, roles, and Ansible vault. Okay, so once you finish complete Ansible learning, right, you would be literate on all of these terminologies. Okay, but let us have a very simple overview of all of this because we we might need to start working on them. Okay, so inventories. Okay, inventory is nothing but the list of all the nodes which your control server has to connect. That's it. Inventory entry, it is nothing but list of nodes which your control server has to connect to. And whenever you see a list, a list can be a static list or a dynamic list. That's what he's trying to do. Okay. So I'll be showing you where to change this because we will be doing it quite soon. Okay. So what is what do is what is that we would write in inventories? So whatever servers which you want to configure from Ansible. You will put them in inventories. As simple as that. Okay. And the next one, modules. Okay. Ansible modules are the are basically, I would say, the things which do the work for us. Okay. For example, you want to install something on your uh, node using Ansible, then you need to find the right module. Okay. Because module does the activity. Module is the atomic unit of work. It is like Linux command. What is Linux command? that does some activity on linux right similarly in ansible module does some activity so for example if i want to ping to the other machine i would be looking out or searching for modules module which helps me to ping i want to install software then i would be searching for modules which help me to install software i want to change something in a file then i would be searching a module which helps me to change something in a file so module is the core work or core things which we utilize in our day to day work okay so ansible comes up with whole list of modules Okay, so we would be basically using them. Now, if if you see over here, he has given you an example of yum module. So, for example, if you want to install something on uh, Red Hat family, for example, if I want to install Apache server, the basic Linux command is yum install httpd. Okay, since there is a yum, rather than using that Linux command, I can replace that with an Ansible module called as yum. Because I will not be writing Linux commands, I'd be writing playbooks, right? And in playbooks, I'd be using modules. Okay, and there is a whole list of modules. We would be going through that, and we would be looking into in which situation we need to use what. Okay, the difference between module and a Linux command mostly is modules are idem potent, whereas Linux commands are not. Okay, yum module kora installation jastindi. Yum Linux command kora installation jastindi. Rone ki difference hindi. The difference is. Yum module of Python of uh, Ansible is idem potent, which means that whether you run it for one time or thousands of time, it would give you the same result. Whereas your commands don't guarantee that. Okay, it might be idem potent or it might not be idem potent. Okay, but there are certain modules which are not idem potent where Ansible is explicit about it. Then you, as an Ansible developer, should basically enforce idem potency. Are we clear? Item potency, any sirlo, every module ke unda ko pouch. There might be some modules where you do not, where they do not guarantee item potency. In that case, we as Ansible developers are responsible for basically hooking it up with something so that it becomes item potent. Probably a if condition, as simple as an if condition will give you an item potency. So that's how it works. Okay. So module is what? It is the thing which does the work. Okay. So to do any work in Ansible. We need to know what are the modules which I need to use. To use which module, I should know first the manual steps. So I want to install Apache Server. If I don't know the steps, I can't write it in Ansible first. Okay. So for a few days, we would be looking at Linux steps as well as basically then converting them into Ansible uh, playbooks using these modules. Okay. Variables, uh, self-explanatory. This we have been uh, learning from years, I think. Okay. Some portions of playbooks which you want to be dynamic, where where which are repeating, which you can pass values to, that becomes a variable, right? Okay. For example, uh, 
the folder where you need to copy the files. Why do you want to put it fixed? Put it as a variable so that user while calling it might change it. Ansible facts. Okay. So whenever you push something from Ansible control server, what it does is it tries to gather information about your node. When I say information, it would be what is a free space, what is the memory that is required, and all of these aspects. Okay. So those details what Ansible collects is called as Ansible facts. Okay. Ansible nundi mana control server nundi node push chest and configuration whatever we write a playbook. The moment we do that, okay, what Ansible does is it will send that via SSH and it will also collect your nodes details. Okay. The nodes details could be host name, free memory, okay, what is its IP address. The, these are the details of your machines and these we call it as facts. Okay, whenever we say Ansible facts, these are the basic details of your node. Yeah. And then plays and playbooks. This is what we write. Okay. A playbook is something like a manual or an instruction manual which we write so that we can execute our infrastructure. For example, your uh, manager comes and tells you that I want a LAMP server. He comes and tells you that I want a FTP server. I want SSH server. Something like that. So, for that activity to realize in Ansible, you would be writing playbook. And what playbook consists of? Playbook consists of different plays. And what each play uses? Each play uses module. Playbook law plays on time, and every play will use module. That's how simple it is. Right? Playbook is nothing but a YML file. We would also learn what a YML file is, but as of now, tell the terminology, whatever we have let, learned, where will the name of or the entries of all of our nodes will go into? Inventory. Right? Inventory is a place where you would write list of all of the servers. In our case, we have added three nodes, right? Node 1, node 2, and node 3. The information of these three will end up in a file which is called as inventory. Okay? So whenever I want to execute any infra automation or infra provisioning, what I would do is I would need to execute some steps. Okay? For each step, I would be finding an equivalent Ansible module. Okay? Ansible module is atomic activity in Ansible. Okay? And then I would have variables. And what are variables for? Rather than hard coding everything, if you want to give user an option so that he can change certain values. For example, install the software in D drive rather than C drive. Okay. Basically, create a file at some other place. Okay. All of these activities. This we would call it as variables. And then we would have facts. What are facts? Facts are details of your nodes which are collected by Ansible whenever you push some configurations. But if you don't push, it will not collect any facts. That's how it works. Okay. Facts are details of your nodes. It can be like memory, host name, free space. It could be anything. Okay. And then we have place and playbooks. Playbook is basically the sequence of plays which we write. And play is an individual activity. And every individual activity uses module. That's how simple it is. Yeah. Are we clear now? So we write all of our entries of our machines in playbooks, right? Yeah, but there is some place where you can write it actually, but not only that. Okay. So remember all of these items. Okay. So and then we would have configuration files. If you want Ansible to behave somewhat differently, the place where Ansible searches for uh, inventories, the place where Ansible logs the information. If you want to change any of those, then there is something called as configuration files. Ansible has a configuration file. Initially, we would start with a configuration which is an hc ansible ansible.cfg. That is a place where we will start with. Okay. So, what is this purpose of configuration file is to change somewhat default behaviors of Ansible. For example, Ansible gives by default an uh, error logging. But if you want a verbose logging, then you have to go to this file. Ansible by default searches for your inventory at specific folder. You don't want to be searched in that folder, but you want it in some other folder. So you want to change these kind of configuration items. And Ansible Ella behave just in the configuration of Marchali and Kunapur. We take the rescue of this file. There are multiple ways of really doing it. One is may change the entries in uh, at C Ansible configuration files. Or there are some other ways like put your Ansible, your own Ansible.cfg in your home directory or create an environment variable, something like that. But don't worry about this. Ansible.cfg is a configuration for Ansible. 
Okay. There you can change certain details if you don't like the default behavior. Or if you if your organization doesn't want the default behavior. That's how it works. Okay. Templates. Okay. This is something which would which would uh, hit almost in every configuration management too. Okay. Let us assume this. Okay. After that, we would have something called as handlers and roles. Don't worry about it. I am not going to discuss about it today because it is for this to understand, we need to know some the other activities very well. But what they are is at the end of Ansible, you should be able to write everything as roles, not as playbooks. So we would be writing them as roles because roles gives you a better reusability. And in roles, we use handlers. Okay, so but for example, I will tell a simple exa simple uh, logic for a handler. Okay, you have, whenever you restart, whenever you restart a service, or let us assume whenever you have changed certain file. Okay, I have changed some configuration file of Apache. Do I need to restart Apache or not? Yes. So every time it doesn't make sense for you to write that step, change file. Restart Apache. So rather than that, what we can do is we can write restart Apache once, and whenever we do this task, we can always ask us ask it to restart. That is called as a handler. Okay. So you can create handlers in uh, in Ansible. That could be as simple as whenever you restart Apache server, also just basically clean up the temp directory and on one Okay. So in restart Apache, whatever module which you have written, okay, you would have a handler over there which basically cleans the temp directory. Something like that. So handler is some action that has to happen immediately after something. Okay. So how do you configure this handler? And role is basically a unit of a better way of reusability of your code so that you can change or you can share a lot of activity of whatever you have done. For example, I am installing a LAMP server. Okay. And uh, you are installing basically MySQL. Okay. LAMP server also has MySQL. All right. So rather than writing two different times, how can I reuse the MySQL whatever I have written already? So that that can be effectively done with roles. Okay, roles is all about reusability, modularity. Okay, the next level. Man, playbooks have any which in the other matter to call Okay. So and the last one which I'm going to discuss is there is one more thing over here, but yeah. But last two. Ansible Vault is how to basically maintain passwords because we can't write passwords directly in the files, right? So if you have some passwords to be handled, then you would be using something called as Ansible Vault. And the last one is Ansible Tower. Okay, Ansible Tower is not a core component of Ansible. That's the reason why it is not here. But we would be learning even that Ansible Tower is an enterprise way of dealing with Ansible. Okay, where it makes it simple. You would have a UI. Uh, you would have a better look at uh, the. You can get the better reports and all of that. But whatever we start with is we start with the open source Ansible. Okay, which is absolutely free. Okay, you can add as many hosts as you want. There is no limit. Okay, but it is open source. Fine. Any doubts till this point? Ansible setup document. Yeah. Okay. So to open Visual Studio Code. code and dot after you install visual studio code yeah that's it okay fine makes sense yeah and you are seeing the last button over here right we have one the fifth one okay click over here and just go and search if you see something called as Answer. Are you seeing anything? Yeah. Language Ansible. Ansible syntax support and Ansible autocomplete. So let us install this. I have it already. So in your case, you would see something called as install. Just install that. Okay. After install, it will ask you to reload. Okay. And if you want, you can basically install. If you don't like this, probably we can go with Ansible autocomplete and all of that. Okay. So anything, anything for that matter. So just go with the win one which has loads of downloads. Okay. So for example, if I don't want it, I can uninstall it at any moment. Okay. 
reload okay first thing is i have loads of uh, what do you say plugins already so i am disabling this them completely disabling them for this workspace so it is not a problem even though if you have multiple what do you say uh, extensions these are called as extensions okay and this work on every other operating system you can do use the same visual studio in windows linux mac all of them okay so what is that i want i want it for ansible so i just go over here he would tell you what is that it does okay and i would go to any other package he would tell you what it does okay he would tell you this is a portion of atomic Uh, atoms uh, auto complete ansible package for visual studio code so let me try this time this one okay and then you have to reload it okay so what this extensions will do you do it to you is whenever you are typing something right it would give you some help that's it nothing beyond it okay fine okay so let us go to our first and important file which is inventory okay so it might have man okay fine it's okay so what i do is i i close all the unused terminals okay ansible zone is fine okay and go over here git bash and let me copy the command for connecting to server and let us create our first inventory with node 1 and node 2 and node 3 yeah fine so control machine connect Oh, why do I need so far from my mouse? Yeah, let me sudo from my mouse. Cd slash hc slash ansible ls. So, what are the three files you are seeing over here? Ansible dot cfg. That is a configuration file. And then you are seeing something called as hosts. This is the file which I am interested in right now. Okay. So this host file is our inventory file. Okay, you can use this, or if you want, you can create one more. Okay, so for the sake of maintaining the originality, what I would do is I would copy this host file, or have a copy of it. Host to host dot. Okay, and now let me just see what are the contents of host. So vi host. you are seeing it right so then it says it gives you certain explanation of how to write and all of that so for us anyway because we are going to learn it i am not interested in all of that okay if you want you can uh, basically put it so what i would do is okay i'd come to the end and hash is comment okay so my nodes nothing difficult right and now here you can write details of your nodes right so details of your nodes are first let us write an entries okay i need private dns of all of this machines okay okay make sense this is what node 1 okay and then also i will have let me see if there is local host that is enabled or not if not i will enable for local host also okay no no let me not write it so let me stop it at that i have written the first node one okay okay 
and now I want to check whether this node is working or not. Okay. So I would be using an Ansible command line and I would be using one module okay. and then I would be using this machine and I would be pinging that. Make sense? Yeah. So I need to go with Ansible module ping. There is a whole list of Ansible modules but for today I am directly not going into the list of modules to confuse you but I am going to use a module called as ping. So I am not going to even write a playbook also. I am going to use the Ansible command line or what we also call as ad hoc commands. What we also call as ad hoc commands. Okay. So I want to use this ping. Okay. And in ping you need to basically tell what are the different machines and all of that. So is this my machine? So I would do Ansible. What my module is minus m or hyphen m. And what is the module which I am going to use? Ping. Okay. And then I am going to call it as all. All is all the entries in your host. So what is happening? Host is unreachable. What is happening? Fail to connect to host. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What what could be the reason for this? Okay. So let me try this now. Ansible minus m ping all working now yeah do you remember the ssh copy id yeah with which user we have done it in the earlier case with which user i was trying it root okay root doesn't have its id copied over there right so that's the reason why it is failing okay fine okay so if you see what it is trying to tell us, I have pinged it and it is responding it. Responding it. Okay. Shall we add other nodes? Yeah. Simple, right? Vi slash etsy ansible os. Okay. Okay. Now node two. Okay. Fine, I don't have permissions on this. Okay. It's okay. Let us make an entry and then uh, I don't want to change the permissions of the files right now. So it's okay. Okay sudo hyphen minus i and vi at c ansible host okay so whatever servers which you have basically you would make an entry of them okay okay and then i would go with my node 3 You can go with IP addresses also if you want. If you don't like host names, you can also put IP addresses over there. Okay. So, make sense? So, I've added three. Now, yes, you switch user Ansible. Because Ansible is the only user which has permissions to basically go over that. So Ansible minus M, I want to use a module or just ping. Okay. And I am not giving any host file. Okay. I am not giving any inventory because by default Ansible picks up the inventory from at C Ansible host. Okay. If you want different inventory, you can write your own file. Even you can do that. Okay. But for us, for now, I am just saying ping and ping to everything. 
whatever is there in that. So, let us see what happens. Happening? So, connection to all of these three machines is success. Okay? Make sense? Fine. But the way of writing like that is good. Okay? But it will not work out in every case. Okay? What if you want to basically out of these three machines, let us assume that one is web server or two are web servers and one is a DB server. There might be certain situations in your configuration where you might want to do certain activities specifically for database server and certain activity separately for web server. How can you address that? How will you address that? So basically that is called as grouping. Okay, You will group your nodes. And how can I group my nodes? Let us just look into that file again. Okay, so vi at c ansible host. For today, let us play with default ansible file. Tomorrow, we will write our own ansible file and then uh, we would have our own entries into this. Okay, so let us assume that our node 1 and node 3 are web servers. Okay, is it okay? Yes. So, I would write something like web servers. Okay. And what are my web servers? Node 1 and node 3. Okay. What is node 1's uh, private DNS? Okay. And node 3. Okay, and then I would be writing it as DB server. Let us assume that our D, our node 2 is DB server. So I'd select node 2. And make sense? So this is called as grouping. So where you basically write something in square bracket and after that you would make host entries. Okay. And now if I want I can make further classifications but before that let me pause it at here and let us see how it works. Okay. So I'll be using ping itself. I'll not be using any other complicated module. Let us work with ping first and then we'll explore what are the different modules. Okay. So switch user to Ansible and then Ansible minus M ping and then I would be saying web servers. So what is happening? It is pinging only to our web servers. Right? So similarly Ansible minus M ping DB so Okay, this is called as grouping of hosts. You can group your different hosts into different categories. Okay, because generally you, you might have different categories where you need to apply the same configuration on these categories of machines. Around up, you would be using this host groupings. Okay, so my machines are already part of some groups, right? Now let me create them or make them part of other groups, even that is possible. Okay, so VI not. Okay. So, vi slash etsy slash ansible slash host file. Now, let us assume that there might be certain situations where based out of your operating system, you need to apply patches. Security upgrade is also there. Ransomware ko vachinatto. Probably you might get some security patches based out of your operating systems. So I would create a group based out of operating system so that I can apply whatever I want to on that machines whenever I want it. Okay. So what I would do is I'd go over here and I would say Ubuntu. Okay. 
and Ubuntu are nothing but these two things, right? Same grouping, yeah, so. What has happened? That's okay. Let me recopy it. It should. Uh, bash prompt commands are much simpler. Oh, it is not not giving it. Fine. I have tried to basically copy it. I don't. Somehow I don't, uh, what do you say, enjoy using copy commands of that VA editor. I hate them. Because basically I started from Windows, right? Uh, select JC, uh, DLU. Somehow I don't enjoy that. Yeah. That's the whole reason for me to use this bash. Yeah. Node 3 and node 1 okay fine so a machine can be part of different groups based out of your convenience okay what a machine and a entry no rule like that so if you see our machine is present in directly with which is not part of any group that is called as ungrouped host okay our machine is part of probably two groups one is called as db server or web server the other one is operating system so now okay su ansible and then ansible minus m ping Okay. okay. All the Ubuntu servers I need to restart. Let us assume that's the scenario. So probably I might find out a module which helps me to restart the servers and then I might execute some command like this. Ansible uh, minus m that module's name and if it takes some parameters we would be looking into how to give that parameters and the group name. That's it. Okay. Fine. So are we clear on whatever we have discussed today? Any doubts on these aspects, right? So can we write our own entry files now? Whenever we write an entry in the host files, what are the categories they are? They are either ungrouped or they are grouped. Okay. So ungrouped host is not a right way of doing it. Okay. So in our entry, this way of writing it down is not a better way. Where is, yeah, okay, don't write it directly always. So I'm, I'm just, what I do is I put comments here, okay, but this is not a good way or a better way to handle any stuff, okay. Write your entry always as a part of some group. Okay. Don't write it as ungrouped. Okay. Because if you want to do anything specific onto that machine, then you have to give that machine's whole name, which becomes difficult. At least if you don't have any other group, you create a group which refers to as this group is has no group. You can call that group as no name group or something like that. Okay. Or not group. Something like that. But don't have them uh, separately. But philosophically or basically technically it is possible but not a good practice. Always have them to be part of some group. Okay. The only thing which is will not be part of that group is there is will be only one machine which will be always which might not be grouped in many many cases is okay. Generally if you have written your Ansible uh, configuration files correctly local host is the only machine okay generally which will not be grouped. Okay, because very rarely we try to use Ansible to control our machine itself. Okay, but 
I have seen people using a group called as localhost and then writing localhost in that. I have seen also that. That's a better, far better way than doing this. Okay. So that's how it is. Okay. Now let me just Ansible minus M ping and then you are seeing minus i right at c angible see what happens this does not have any target hosts okay now let me do vi at c angible host dot original and let me write somewhere down the line something called as localhost. Let me execute the same command again. What is happening? Some modules does not make sense error missing target host. I'm, I'm missing the target host command. Basically what is this command? What is the error which I'm trying to do? I want you to find it out. Ninjation the entry? Okay, entry ration. And I'm using something called as minus i. Is minus i right? Or do I need to use the other command line? The whole point why I'm asking you to do this is, okay, whenever you look at Ansible command, okay, man Ansible, okay, there are loads and uh, loads of command line arguments, okay, okay, it is not possible for us to go through each and every command, okay. So at least I want you guys to look into that, that, that there is some documentation around whenever I want to do something differently, there is basically something which can help me out. Meer idhar na vaadko achu, ledhanta Ansible command line options, just Google it, you would get all of the stuff. I have, what is that I have used? I have used Ansible, minus M, ping, and after that I have given something called as minus I, and I have given some other inventory file. Okay, is that the right way of doing it or not? I want you to Google and tell me tomorrow. Okay, or am um, did I did something wrong over there? Okay, is under chair at least uh, for the people who are interested, try to do it. Because I will allow you to approach my colleagues under as usual. Okay, so don't worry about them. Try to do this because command lines can never be taught. They can be only experience. Me chase the gun, delete. Okay, so. There are many options, many, many options, and these options keep on changing. Probably in the next version of Ansible, you might get some more command line arguments. So the only way to keep them up to date is just by going through this documentation and using them. So write down the command which I have written and just tell me what is the mistake which I have done. Why it is telling as missing target hosts? What is the problem with that? Yeah? Sometimes I would give this these kind of reasons, errors, because it is not that I want you to trouble you by asking you to going into documentation and all of that because that is not trouble that is going to be your job. Okay, then trouble and coke and that is how your job will be. Okay, you have to work on something just by exploring the documentation of it. Okay. So if you see in Ansible by by end of this course, what would be what is that we would be doing? We would be doing configuration management, right? And whenever you are configuring it, for example, they ask you to use Ansible to install uh, something which you have never done, never done in your entire life, okay, even not in your wildest imagination, but they have asked you to do it, how will you do that, okay, you can't tell that quality dot has not teached us, right, because this is not a board exam anyway, the only way to do it is any activities in configuration management, first you have to do it manually, do it manually. And for each manual step, try to automate them into Ansible or shell script. Even if you want to write a shell script, that's a, that's a process. You need to know manual steps, convert them into automation. That's a basic philosophy of any automation. Okay. So we would be doing that manual activities. And whenever we are doing some manual activities, there are some errors that happen. And how do you basically find out the errors? It, it is all journey. You will not learn it in one day. But always remember, whenever error, error comes, don't stop it at that. Try to see or copy that error, whatever you are seeing, paste it in Google and see what it says. 
there will be lot of stack overflow suggestions of what it is all about okay 